Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. I thank you for those of you that have joined us on live stream at this very moment. Uh, we do have very serious things that are happening in Israel. Those of you that are watching live stream, catch our YouTube broadcast later where you'll be able to see some of the images of things that we'll be speaking about this evening here. Uh, at any rate, let me bring you up to date here. This is an article that came out on The Guardian. Uh, it says, Palestinians killed an Israeli stabbed in another day of violence. And uh, in fact, earlier, I know Brother Paul Begley, was, uh, he's in Jerusalem right now. He actually uh, caught, while he was in a cab there, the actual live broadcast coming on the news in the car of a, of a Palestinian woman, an Arab woman there, uh, near Lion's Gate, had stabbed another, Pal another Jewish man. And uh, it's already being spoken about in news all over the place that, yes, indeed, the third intifada has begun. And the tax and the chaos in and around the old city and different parts of Israel is just really getting completely out of control. Uh, we know that the, at one point there, the, uh, the Israeli government was closing down the old city to Arabs for 48 hours. They also are now are installing metal detectors. Uh, for screening of individuals coming into the old city. But then again, you're, th you're looking at knife attacks. There's a lot of butchers inside the old city, and that's going to really make for mayhem because they could easily get a knife at any point, any place that they wanted to from other Arab businessmen besides even those that sell hardware and goods of these, this nature as well. So I really believe that what it should be done is a butcher should be banned from the old city as well as any hardware store that would sell knives, etc., uh, it's it's very difficult situation, not to mention you have Arabs that live in the old city as well. So there's always a, a very vast ability for, for Arab attackers to be able to get a hold of um, knives and weapons in the old city without any problem whatsoever. Uh, anyway, let me take you to the article here. And uh, uh, we have uh, one of the photos right here, which you'll be able to see on your screen on YouTube here. It says here, volunteers from the Israeli humanitarian group Zaka clean a site where a Palestinian man was stabbed. 25-year-old Jewish man in Jerusalem uh, is, in, is what's on the photograph right here. And, um, and, and then, of course, it just goes on from there. It says, a Palestinian has died after being shot in clashes with Israeli security forces in Jerusalem. Uh, as another day of violence saw four stabbing attacks on Israelis and raised fears of further escalation on Friday when the thousands of Palestinians will enter Jerusalem's old city to pray. Um, uh, uh, Ahmed uh, Bitwai, the director of Ramallah Hospital in West Bank, said uh, Wisman Jamal 20 had arrived with a bullet wound to the chest. Witnesses in uh, Shuafat refugee camp in Jerusalem said clashes had broken out between Palestinians protesters, and Israeli forces. Separately, police in Tel Aviv shot and killed a man who attacked four Israelis with a screwdriver while uh, two Israeli soldiers were stabbed in separate incidents and a Jewish student was stabbed in Jerusalem. Uh, there are fears that the increasingly violent clashes will erupt before Friday's prayers at the Alaska Mosque, uh, uh, access to which has been heavily restricted in the past weeks. Israeli police have begun installing metal detectors around the entrances of the old city and some streets inside near uh, Barkat. The mayor of Jerusalem urged residents, now get this, this is one that really uh, took me by surprise, and yet I am very proud of the mayor for making this statement here. He urged residents with gun licenses to carry their weapons at all times. Given the current escalation in the security situation, those with licensed a uh, firearm who know what to do with it must go out with their weapons. It's an imperative, uh, Berkat told Army Radio. In a way, it's a like military reserve duty. I couldn't agree more. The only way we can stop terror that is going on in Jerusalem as of right now is to counterreact the terrorists that are doing it so that they know that Israelis are not going to play games. Uh, and, and the thing is, the Israeli people need to be armed. The Palestinian people need to know that Israel is not going to tolerate the t attacks. Remember, we did a broadcast right from Jerusalem's old city here only about 10 or 10, 15 days ago, something like that. It was carried by uh, United with Israel. It went really crazy in the views, but I showed you how Jewish worshipers returning from the hotel 
they don't instigate problems, but yet the Palestinians are there. The Arab uh, Palestinians are there mocking, trying to start a fight with the Jewish people. In fact, we even caught it on camera where they lunged after the Jewish uh, supporters there that were singing psalms from the Bible and from their prayer books, singing in order to, uh, to encourage their brethren that had to go through a gauntlet of, uh, of mockers and attackers. Uh, but again, time and time again, we always see this, as we're seeing even in the attacks here. This is not something provo provoked. Uh, the Israelis are trying, the Jewish worshipers are trying to either get to their homes or they're trying to get uh, to the hotel where they do their prayers at, and they're being attacked, stabbed, mutilated, mauled, and everything else by a bunch of radical Arabs. Uh, there, as people call them Palestinians, they're not really Palestinians, there is no Palestine, uh, but the Catholic Church was nice enough to make this name up for us. Israel, it does good for Israel to be reminded uh, that the Catholic Church is Israel's greatest enemy next to Islam. And uh, in fact, I got a letter from uh, Mark Biltz to this evening. We had actually, I was asking him a question on something else. Someone had seen him at, uh, speaking at an event where there was a Catholic flag in the background. And he reminded me that, that he does very much agree and believes that the, next to Islam, the greatest enemy that Israel has is, guess what, the Vatican. The Roman, and as he called it, which me and him have talk, talked about this privately before, he said that the Romans of today, the Vatican City, this is the children of Esau, the children of Edom. So I applaud Mark, Mark for making that stance right there, and uh, especially writing me this to, in, in the email as well. In an effort to calm the tensions, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who banned all Israeli cabinet ministers and MPs from visiting the hilltop compound that houses Alaska Mosque, the site is revered by Muslim as a place where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heaven and by Jews as the site of the, of the two Jewish biblical temples. Now, uh, there again, the prime minister is trying to play politics once again to keep the world uh, happy with, with the way his actions are going. But it's not going to make any peace by not uh, allowing Jewish people to go on the Temple Mount. It is theirs. They have a right to it. They should be allowed to actually go there. Also says in the article, in the first attack in Israel, on Israelis on Thursday, a Palestinian stabbed a 25-year-old man in Jerusalem, leaving him in serious condition. The 19-year-old attacker was arrested. Later in the day, an Israeli soldier and three passerbys were stabbed in Tel Aviv, and the attacker was killed. In the third attack, Palestinians stabbed an Israeli near the Jewish settlement of Kiryat Arab in the West Bank. The military said the victim was seriously wounded and the attacker fled. And on Thursday evening, a soldier in the northern Israeli town of Afula was stabbed and his attacker captured, authorities said. Afula, by the way, uh, many of you guys may have remember this city there when you travel uh, from, um, that's from um, uh, the, the coastal town right there of uh, in, uh, not in Getty, what am I thinking? Haifa, going from Haifa to the Galilee there. You go right through Afula on the way there. It's about halfway in between there. Also says, four Israelis and seven Palestinians have been killed over the past week. Hundreds of Palestinians have also been wounded in the demonstrations and clashes across the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Uh, the latest unrest began about three weeks ago as Palestinians repeatedly barricaded themselves inside the mosque and hurled stones and firebombs, fireworks at police uh, the violence later spread to Arab neighborhoods of the East Jerusalem and to the West Bank, and on Tuesday there were uh, disturbances in the Jaffa, a largely Arab area of Tel Aviv. Uh, many Palestinians believe Israel is trying to expand Jewish presence at the site, a claim that Israel adamantly denies. Under a long-standing arrangement uh, administered by Islamic authorities, Jews are allowed to visit the site during certain hours, but not pray there. Um, Friends, it is very, very serious there. As, as we were there ourselves there, we actually were at the scene uh, at the time of a stabbing right there uh, near Joppa Street there. And, uh, of course, the man that we photographed, we thought the man was actually uh, was passed out from being drunk because there was a very big party going on there. He did die of his wounds. Another one was wounded there. Uh, it, it is a very serious situation there in Israel and, uh, and very tense nonetheless. Uh, be praying also for Brother Begley there while he is there. As I mentioned to him, be safe. It's not a safe place to be right now uh, in Israel. I know he leaves out on Monday as well. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to other news here as well. In Russia, um, 
Russia, the Russian Defense Ministry, is aware of, of the Free Syrian Army and their willingness to battle ISIS together. This is what is coming out uh, from the uh, uh, Defense Ministry in Russia. Uh, and, and you can tell quite clearly the United States is probably pushing this so that Russia quits uh, killing these members of the Free Syrian Army that have been trying to overthrow Basra Assad because in, in uh, Russia's view, they are terrorists as well. Uh, the article is kind of interesting, though. Let me just share some of this information with you. Russian Defense Ministry is, says they are aware of the information that the Free Syrian Army has agreed to cooperate and get involved in discussions related to the struggle against the Islamic State. Uh, militants, Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor uh, uh, excuse me, Kanish, uh, Kanova said on Thursday, we focused our attention on the fact that certain forces operating in Syria at present, including the Free Syrian Army, express their willingness to cooperate and get involved in the discussions and uh, participation in the struggle against ISIL. Uh, according to the, to the uh, defense minister, he said, undergoing that the Russian defense ministry was open to contacts and was set to debate any constructive proposals. He goes on to say, though, in the meantime, uh, the appeals to foreign counterparts for coordinates of ISIL facilities had remained unanswered. In other words, the United States is not divulging any information that they have about ISIS or ISIL or IS or anyone else. And this is the way uh, Kanish, Kanish uh, Kov re responded. He says, today, we asked them, give us the coordinates of ISIL facilities. He said, but either silence is the answer or, or a refusal. All attempts to receive coordinates of the moderate opposition have failed as well. He said, as of today, we observe a complete deadlock provoking a conclusion. Either the moderate opposition is a ghost or you just pretend you support it, he said. These are serious words coming from uh, the defense ministry of Russia when they actually make the, uh, the, the, the statement saying, as of today, we observe a complete deadlock provoking a conclusion. Either the moderate opposition is a ghost or you just pretend you support it. As I said, Russia is battling the United States. Only this time, it's a little different. Before, Russia and the United States have been using different soldiers, like in the case of the Ukraine battle. They have used both the East and West, and they have used those people in order to fight their own battles over the country that they want. Then we get into the Middle East, and of course, uh, Russia had been arming Basra Assad and his government in Syria, and the United States had been uh, arming the Free Syrian Army, and of course, uh, initially arming the ISIS group to cause the chaos in the Middle East. And the whole reason for all of this is for the oil there in the Middle East. Clearly, an Ezekiel 38 prophecy, when Gog and Magog, they come down for the spoil there in the middle, there near Jerusalem. You have to remember, before 1967, what we call the Golan Heights was actually under Syrian control. It was part of what would be considered the Syrian country. Israel took the Golan Heights in 1967 and has remained under Israeli control ever since. It is really technically a part of Israel, according to the land that was given to Israel in biblical times. But Russia now is actually there in Syria fighting the battle, no longer using Basra Assad as he sees that he can't win. Now Russia had to come to the very front. He had more or less a hook put in his jaw to bring him down because Basra Assad cannot hold his own. So instead of Russia arming Assad and helping him by this way to fight the Americans where the Americans are arming the Free Syrian Army and ISIS, now Russia took up the arms directly themselves. Russia's not going to let that oil fall into American hands. And it's been American interest that's been doing the drilling that has found huge amounts of oil in the Golan. And of course, Russia knows this. We've known it quite some time ourselves. And they're not going to allow this to go into American hands. So now Russia is there in Syria fighting the United States' armed militant groups there in the region. The question is, how much does this oil really matter to the United States? Will they get involved in a direct conflict with Russia over this region? 
And of course, if there comes pressure against the Golan Heights and Russia going to take that back on the for the for the for the sake of the Syrian government, it will bring Israel into a confrontation with Russia. And if Israel gets into a confrontation with Russia, the United States if it still has Barack Obama, will more than likely abstain from the battle or they may very well get involved in the battle. Nonetheless, it could turn into a major escalation in the events in the Middle East. It may also be what brings down the two witnesses. The building of the third temple will definitely do that. But one thing's for sure, the battle and Israel suffering from any kind of battle by whether it be Russian, Chinese, or Iranian forces in the region there is definitely going to begin to set the stage for your two witnesses to come on the scene. God somewhere has got to bring this to an end, bring it to a close. God's also got to wake up the church, for she has fell asleep. Many, though, seem to be quite alert, but when it comes to the doctrinal problems, there's many massive problems to be resolved. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.